lot of, um, well, here's two more people. Let me just put a pause on that. Let's see. Okay. Nice to see you both, Rob and Sage. Hello, hello. Here comes Pat. See, I jumped the gun. I should have just waited those extra few minutes. <laughs> All right. I just want you to know that we are recording this meeting. And I hope that's, is it, is it okay with everybody? Um, I know that, Isla, I know your mother really wanted to see it. And it's, it's so are you okay with, probably it's just going to show speaker view on the recording, but um, just wanted you to know that was happening. Yeah, okay, great. Okay, so again, I'm just going to um, say welcome again. And, and um, North Star, keep your eye on the waiting room to see if anybody else pops in. So nice to see you all on this Sunday. And again, I'm Tracy Forrest at Spirit Hollow here in southwestern Vermont. And I'm right on the border of New York and Massachusetts in that very little corner um, of Vermont that's almost connected. I'm only three miles from the New York border. And we're in the Taconic Mountain Range here, not in the Green Mountains, even though Vermont is known for the Green Mountains. There's another mountain range <laughs> that is supposedly even older. And so our land is very close to Scott and Lisa. You see Scott Carino here with his um, wife, Lisa, and they run Pompanook, which is who we're collaborating with for this gap semester. Our two centers are six miles apart, and we will have a shuttle that um, takes the participants between the two sites daily. And we'll look a little bit in a little bit, we're going to look at some pictures of the two sites, but first we wanted to give an overview of the program. But we are, even though we're in two different states, we're literally in the same in the same wilderness area, and so we're really blessed to have um, to have each other just nearby, just over the mountain here, and it's really excited about collaborating. And so, even though this is the first semester we're going to do this gap program in the fall we've each been running passionately <laughs> programs that are about community nature connection young people for years and years and years and i have run here at spirit hollow along with kimbers here um, earthcraft a version in the summer for the past three years and what we this is what this grew from is this desire to go deeper and to see how much more territory we could cover if we could actually immerse for two months together in these beautiful places. So I just wanna invite you at any point, if you wanna drop a question in the chat, that's fine. And there will be time at the end, toward the uh, second half of the meeting for you to ask um, any questions you might have. But if you wanna you know, put them in the chat, that's just fine, right? So we're gonna turn it over to Deer Rider here who's located right now in California, but lives in Colorado. And he is gonna tell us, kind of give us like the big picture worldview of this program. Happy to do that. Did we wanna do guide introduction? Oh, right, that's true. Let's do that first. Yeah, okay. go ahead, you, you start. All right, hi, I'm Deer. Uh, I live in Southwest Colorado. Uh, Durango, Mancus area, although at the moment I'm in California. And it's kind of one of those things where I feel like one of those parents who, the more we create this program, the more envious I am of it. Like, man, like I'm so jealous that it's happening and that I didn't get to experience it when I was, when I was around that age. And Partly the reason I know that and feel that is because I've lived in a dozen countries. I've traveled to 26, 27, and I've lived in a lot of different communities um, from permaculture to monastic to activist to um, all sorts. And 
uh, what's happening here is, in my experience, a really unique synergy of all that that I've never seen anywhere else. Um, and that's and there's many reasons why that is, and but just the the mixture of it done so well um, is what gets me excited. Pass it to you, North Star. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Kimber or North Star, um, and I am so very excited about this program because I um, had a pretty tough time in my own adolescence into young adulthood. And I think like many of us in this day and age recognized that there was something horrifically wrong with the culture that we were being fed in the mainstream. And there was that rejection of it and not knowing healthy alternatives or places to go. So my story is involved in a lot of desperate searching in the wrong places <laughs> before finally finding Spirit Hollow, which really changed my life and probably saved my life in many ways. But um, I finally found Spirit Hollow when I was right around the aging out of our programs. I think I was like 26, 27. And finally finding healthy alternatives of people who were engaged in regenerative culture and alternative ways of being in community, both with humans and most importantly to me with the more than humans and with the natural world and really dreaming and practicing ways of living in reciprocity and symbiosis. And so the last decade I've been deepening into my work through trainings and programs there. And in the last few years, I've um, been on staff for a lot of the programs for young ones, both this Earthcraft program and some for some younger children. And um, I think what's most exciting to me is that the kind of other piece of my work and, you know, women's work and doing work with adults is so much remedial and unlearning and healing from our culture and um, deep conditioning. And to have experienced bringing some of these tools and models and resources to, to age appropriate young ones who are on that threshold of becoming and learning their place in the world is just so powerful to not have to undo, but to be given um, these opportunities when you're ripe and ready for it. So I'm so excited to have this long time to really delve into these models. Um, I can't wait. Go ahead, Joe. Hi everyone, I'm Joe. Um, and I'm also in the Southwest right now. I'm in around near Durango, Colorado. And yeah, um, my background and my excitement for this com program comes from, I was, uh, in my twenties, I had the, the great fortune to follow in with a, a few, um, international Buddhist teachers who brought me to various, um, ecological communities in India, Israel, Palestine, and, and Europe. Um, and we also did service work. So we worked with refugees, worked with a leprosy community in India, and we did um, uh, grassroots peace work in Israel, Palestine. And what was unique and special about this experience is that we combined meditation practice with this active hands-on work, like being this change we want to see in the world. And I feel grateful for that time. It saved my life as a young adult and showed me a purposeful way to live and i think that's probably the piece i'm most excited about is supporting younger folks to find what it is that truly lights their fire what is their meaning purpose what brings them joy um i found that mainstream society didn't give that to me and I feel grateful that there were older people in my life that were able to see me and help me step into that. Um, and I want to do the same for, for younger folks, essentially. So yeah, that's why I'm excited about this program. Thank you so much for being here. Yay. Lisa and Scott, do you want to tell us a little bit about you and a little bit about your Sure, yeah. sure. Um, Scott and I are thrilled to be hosting this kind of a program. We've done many, many programs over the years for young people, some as young as, as uh, elementary age, 
but we worked for many years with uh, the local high school with seniors who were graduating and were required to do some kind of community service. And here at, on Pompanook on the land, uh, we've, we've come to know this place very, very well, what grows here, how to grow successful gardens here, uh, how, to, how to cook with what we've grown. And um, these high school students who've come to do their community service have, have responded with such enthusiasm for all of it, for working in the garden, for learning about native plants, for cooking, and um, for simply being in this place which they recognize as a safe place and um, you know, it's, it is a safe place, just geographically, the name Pompanook refers to this little nook, this safe corner of, of land that is surrounded by state forest. I think the New York side state forest runs into the Vermont side of the state forest. And um, it's been a place where young people have have just thrived with folks from so many different backgrounds and um, and yes, and from different populations as well. You can jump in here because it's not mm -hmm. just about me. I'm sort of, <laughs> we think of ourselves as Mama Nook and Papa Nook. <laughs> and um, and I, I like that. I, I, that's my role here. And I look forward to sharing some of the secrets of the land and um, the magical places that exist here and how access to that just enriches. That's, that's what I have to say. <laughs> and I, I'm Scott and we've, we've been on this land um, for 34 years now. And we started our first building 33 years ago, uh, which is the roundhouse where folks will be staying. Um, but all of the buildings here are, are um, built with local materials, straw bale structures, cordwood structures, a combination of both, um, some of them off the grid. Um, and we love sharing this place. Um, uh, we have a bakery on site. Lisa and I run a bakery. Um, and so for us to um, begin again to uh, use our home as the educational center it was designed to be, it, this place was started by six teachers um, who wanted to create a, an educational center um, over the years, they've moved uh, away to the West Coast and, and different places. So we're the ones who have kind of now stayed here and, um, and we're happy to be here. We began this place as an intentional community. Now we consider community to be whoever is here for periods of time. Um, and so this is what we see uh, our role is to, um, to sort of uh, cradle the community of this program. Um, and we're really excited about that um, and to bring ourselves to it as well. So, yeah. Wow, thank you. I'm just gonna um, share my screen for a minute so you all can see where Pompano what Pompanook looks like and um, what the roundhouse he's talking about where where the participants will be living looks like. So um, let me just quickly do that. And so this is, Scott, do you wanna say? Sure, anything? that's that's the roundhouse and it is, uh, it is the center of Pompanook Farm. Uh, we actually built this building first, um, largely because we, I had experience of going to communities who decided to build private homes first and they never got to their center. And we decided to build our center first and then private homes after. 
and so much life has taken place in in this building and this is where folks will be staying and eating together and um, sharing whatever uh, in this in this building yeah there's another shot of your beautiful yeah place. it's one of the our garden. gardens yeah and then and the barn. again the barn and this is the downstairs um of the roundhouse uh kitchen is in the background a table that seats 24 uh and a pizza oven on the left there Yay. Um, yeah yeah and this is a, a shot of upstairs um the whole top floor um we can we can and do clear the whole uh, south half of the space um, as a living or a, a space to use for teaching and sharing. Uh, this space has held 50 people in it for concerts and um, it's it's a large space. And the, be the bedrooms, you probably won't, I don't know if you have pictures of that, but the bedrooms are on the south side, are on the north side of the building. Mm. Right. Well, while we're showing pictures, I'll just show you a few pictures of Spirit Hollow, and then we'll go into the curriculum a little bit, if that sounds good to everybody. Yeah. I know time goes by quickly. Um, this is a shot from kind of above. That's my home, and that's what we call the medicine wheel garden. So it's just planted with perennials and her and, her, and herbs, and um, and then my home is there, my chickens, etc. It's a geodesic dome which is really cool. Um, this is the the brook yurt, which in the, it is a winter shot just down below it is a brook that runs perennially next to and next to the yurt. And it has um, some ceremonial spaces along its banks where we have fires and um, ceremonies. And it's just a shot of some earth crafters in a, in a pod by the gardens by our spiral labyrinth. I'll just give you a moment there. And um, a view of the labyrinth and the gardens and the brook. And we are fortunate that we just got a, um, a big donation and we're putting up another yurt, a 30 foot yurt, which will be here by fall. We'll be here actually, if everything goes as planned, it'll be here the second weekend in May is when we're having our yurt raising. And so we'll have a large space, a much larger space for uh, movement and, and, and gathering and all that kind of stuff. And Scott and Lisa also have yurts over at Pompanook. So we're, um, there's going to be abundant spaces for everybody to, to hang out and to, to dive deep. And this is just a, this is not anything but a shot of my fantasy yurt, which is coming. So there you have it. <laughs> um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then turn it over to Deer, um, who's going to just give us kind of the overview, the big picture view of the program. And then we're going to talk about the four areas of focus in our curriculum. Thank you. And at any point, if one of my colleagues wants to jump in because I'll inevitably miss something or you feel passionate zeal. Um, so I think we're all here because we already recognize that not only is mainstream culture not satisfying something deep within ourselves and within our communities and um, but in many ways is uh, oppressive or repressive uh, to it to stunt to stunt how we truly want to bloom in this world. In fact, like what is the, what are our reasons for being here? Like what's our original instructions? What are our unique encoded identities in relationship to the land um, with our soul, with each other um, and the differences and actually the, the unifications of all that. So I think the question is why us? Why is that unique? Why are we uh, well positioned to offer something? And as I alluded to earlier, all of us who are creating this have been a part of communities that are really rich and wonderful. Um, Joe spoke to some of his communities um, and the work of course at Spirit Hollow and Pompanook 
And you can find communities that are based in permaculture, based in ecological development, based on um, practical skills. Um, you can find communities that might have a spiritual orientation or a soul-centric orientation. Uh, you can find adventure-based outdoors communities. You can find um, psychological uh, development base communities for these age groups. You can find artistic communities. Um, I would say it would take you a really long time, if ever, to find all of that synergistically blended in a way with the intention of how do we as a community support each other in our own unique flowerings that will serve both our families, our communities, and the earth. And I believe that we're doing that here and suckering, if you will, the deep roots and sap. We were talking about tapping the trees. So the sap metaphor just came to me um, of the experience, both with the land and all of our backgrounds to create something that's, that's truly special. And I could go into the depths of it. And I know that we're kind of moving in that direction. So we'll just say that that the, all of that encapsulated in an eight week microcosm of a village that is soul centric, ecological, um, communal, personally and collectively developmental. And each of us and together has a depth of experience that can support those areas and has a deep passion to do so. And I'll, I'll let that go because I know if I slide into the next realm, it will go onto somebody else's spiel. So does that mean I'll start spieling? It's your spiel time. Yeah. Okay. Take no over. Spiel. We can um, all go on for hours. So it's hard to like, yeah, go ahead, Kimber. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of wanted to drop into these four main areas of focus that we're going to be working on during this program. And I really like to think of it as like widening circles. And so the work that we're doing here on the deepest level is regenerative culture. But we acknowledge that that starts with each individual and that our focus is always on the individual in context and in relationship. So that first focus is individual unfoldment. And this is where we're going to spend time doing the personal healing, personal holing work. Um, our work here is deeply informed by the Animus Valley models. And so we'll be doing some wild mind work and some soul craft. And the idea here is really to empower each person to discover and then really bring forth their unique gifts. So we talk sometimes about the idea of ecological niche, that each of us came into the world with particular gifts and a particular place where we alone can fulfill whatever our personal calling is. So through different practices like dream work and um, the opportunity to do a rite of passage by really spending solo time in the wilderness, um, we're discerning here the gifts of each individual and helping to bring them to fruition. Um, and then so the next circle out of the personal is our soul centric community. So now we're looking at the context with other humans and really imagining ways of being in community in society that are symbiotic and healthy. And one of the beautiful things about a program like this is that we do have that opportunity um, to create the village in microcosm. So in living together and going through just the daily tasks of cooking and cleaning and making decisions in a group and delegating responsibilities and taking on leadership, we really have the opportunity to practice those ways of being in symbiotic community. Um, yeah, and so and all of the skills attendant with that. So our carpentry and national natural building and gardening, um, ways to just really be a functional adult in society, um, from the basic to the interpersonal dynamics of how that all manifests. Um, and then our next wider circle is taking into account beyond just the human the more than human world and the sacred others and to acknowledge that we have a responsibility to not just our human communities, but to the entire ecosystem of which we are a part. 
Um, and so that relationship with what we see as an animate world is really a core of our philosophy and our intention here. And so through different practices of being in the wilderness through ritual and ceremony, um, really opening ourselves to a conversation that goes beyond the human centric and takes into account the needs of all of the beings that share our home with us. Um, and then the widest circle um, is the deep time. And another really informing model for this work is Joanna Macy's work that reconnects. And so we'll spend a lot of time thinking about the widest view possible of as we find our individual gifts and role in these times, looking to how we can then become ancestors for the future ones. And so much of us, I think part of the, the break with our culture is this selfishness and immediacy of instant gratification and not taking the time to step back and think about how the decisions that we make, the culture we're creating is going to affect many generations in the future. And so we really are always trying to come back to that widest possible lens of our responsibility going into the future. And with that, I will pass it to Joe to bring us into a little more of the nuts and bolts of what that looks like on a daily basis. Yeah, thanks, Kimbers. Um, so I think I'll just run, run us through a day um, and a week and kind of see what branches off of that. But um, essentially, as Tracy spoke to um, students and at least one of the guide team and also Scott and Lisa, uh, the hosts at Papanook will reside at Papanook Farm. This will be the living quarters. And Spirit Hollow is going to be our experiential learning center. So uh, we'll start with the day, say it's Monday. Um, we wake up at Papanook Farm and we have breakfast. We get ready for the day, get in a van. We have a van and then we drive six miles over to Spirit Hollow. At Spirit Hollow, we'll start with... Uh, like a morning, you could say like morning um, grounding, presencing um, practice. So this could be uh, meditation. Um, Scott also is a very experienced Tai Chi teacher, has taught um, students of all age levels. And this is just a way of starting our day with like a, a blank slate. Yeah, so that we can move into it organically and and see what comes and be fully, fully present. Um, from there, we'll also have a check-in, yeah, like a morning, like, hey, how are you doing? Like, get on the same page uh, with each other. Um, it's important to know if someone's having a tough time at the beginning of the day, or someone might be really excited about a particular project. And just like kind of bring this all into the, the collective um, fields helps us um, navigate through the day in a um, uh, mutually supportive way. So, We've fed ourselves, we've uh, checked in, we've grounded ourselves in our minds and bodies, and then we flow into our experiential learning. So um, at Earthcrafts, uh, all the learning is designed to be experiential and also organically evolving according to student interest. Yeah. So uh, Kimber's mentioned some of the areas, but we have a wide range of uh available material essentially yeah we can get into organic gardening we can get into natural building scott's a, uh, a very experienced natural builder um we can get into herbalism and food preservation we get into, we can get into uh wilderness orienteering and uh survival skills um making fire uh friction fire out of uh uh what they call a bow drill you know like it's a uh, uh, rubbing uh, uh wood wood together at very high speeds and you can create fire out of this um it could be diving deeper into um inner work yeah going for a vision quest or um getting really into the uh depths of meditation practice um it could be uh getting into communication skills with each other um really learning the nuances of interpersonal dynamic holding ourselves uh and our emotions in a good way and also moving through conflict and uplifting each other 
so there's a range of areas. We have kind of a whole um, grab bag of possibilities. And according to group needs and student interests, we can dive deeper into all these things. So all that to say, we've arrived at Spirit Hollow and here we are, we have an opportunity to do our learning project for the day. So for example, suppose that we've decided that we're going to plant a food forest. Yes, yeah, so this um, food system that we don't have to uh, till and plant every year, but is is based on uh, uh, trees and bushes and such that continue to regrow and provide food and medicine for for our community. Um, in the morning, we may design that food for us. We may get the the skills, uh, look at Bill Mollison, Mollison's Permaculture 101 um, resource from uh, various members of the guides team, guide team have uh, experience with permaculture and we'll make a design for that, that project. By the end of the morning, we've come up with a, a decent plan and we take a break for lunch. And then in the afternoon, we start building it, um, planting, digging holes for trees. Maybe the next day we've realized that we actually have to reroute our irrigation system because we don't have enough rainfall. I mean, this is more of a problem in the Southwest um, than in Vermont, but uh, perhaps we've come up to it on, on a problem or, or something we need to work through in that first day. We pivot, we set, assign a team to look more into uh, uh, water management and how we're actually gonna uh, make this work uh, for ourselves and in good relationship with the land. So it's just a small example of how uh, learning can start from an idea, a design, and move into action on the ground and then working with what actually comes because it's always gonna veer from, from what we had initially in our heads. So that's just an example of a project. Um, and the majority of the week will uh, be these kinds of projects that will be engaging in communally. Um, one day of the week will be more focused on students uh, working on their personal projects. So there's an idea that each student, as we move through the program, is going to either come in with or as they move through, get a sense of what they are deeply passionate about, what they're excited about. And then perhaps this is something we can start thinking about now. And at least one day we'll be focusing more on that. Um, and there'll be ways that we'll integrate that into the wider group work as well. Um, we may also have a field trip day where we go out and visit local artisans, um, perhaps learn particular skills we need like woodcrafting or uh, drum making or, or something like this, um, or, or visit a local wilderness site. Um, evenings will tend to be time for rest, socialization, fun. Um, sometimes we may do a uh, collective group activity, open stage, uh, maybe a night of storytelling, um, so night where, night where we have a discussion about a um, a topic of interest, um, it, the world is is available, um, and particularly for student led activities. Um, weekends are for rest, downtime. Um, possibly, sometimes we may take longer trips away, um, and of course, tending to our our basic needs, uh, such things like laundry and, and food shopping. Um, yeah, that's kind of a, a, a gist of the schedule. And if we have more questions, we can um, certainly pop in the chat or, or ask them at the end. Um, the one thing I do want to name is that um, this program is going to be running with uh, 10 to 14 students. And we have a guide team of four, as well as uh, Scott and Lisa, who will be our hosts at Pumpernick. So this is a very high um, guide to student ratio. Yeah, so at most, it'll be three or four students per one guide. And so this allows for a lot, a lot, a lot of individual mentorship and attention, as well as uh, tailoring the experience to really suit um, the individual. And this is part of our... Um, yeah, this piece of uh, really allowing um, each of us to blossom and in Deer's words, flower into our um, who we were born to be. 
um, who we are that feels right, feels like home, feels like our purpose here on this earth. So that's about what I got to say. Thanks for listening and not sure what we're doing next. Kimber's going to jump in again. Yeah, I just wanted to add one more thing um, to that overview is that we're kind of weaving, as Deer was talking about, as we're weaving all of these different modalities and kind of lenses together, there's this way in which each of our days will be moving from the individual into group context and then spending a lot of time to process and integrate in that larger context of alone time in nature. So one of the kind of ways to look at how many of our days go in this work is that there's this emphasis, you know, starting on the individual, starting on the inner work, and whether that's through guided journeying or deep imagining, we're really honing these skills um, of the wild mind and acknowledging all the facets of our own personalities and trying to both heal and finish de developmental tasks that may not have happened organically in our lives thus far um, to really identify both strengths and areas where we need to work and grow and heal and then to be able to be held in a safe container which is the group which is you know we'll spend a lot of time on the way of counsel um, to really create and hold a safe container for people to share and be witnessed in their inner work and with the reflection and returning to that context of the human group and the community we're creating. But then there will be a lot of time to take some of those awarenesses and gleanings and go out on the land and always in addition to you know the guide, the human guide to participant ratio, I think a really beautiful piece of this program is to return to the land itself and this incredible resource of the hundred acres of Spirit Hollow in the thousand acre national forest that surrounds it. And everything that we do from these really practical pieces that Joe was speaking to a little bit of our building projects and um, the, the experiential learnings, all to be taken out onto the land and to really have that be our primary guide in a sense that this nature-based uh, model is always informing every step that we do. Um, and I think that's a, a really beautiful and important piece of what our day looks like, that we're kind of always this inhale and exhale of diving deep into our own person personality and emergent mythos and gifts, and then feeling that out within a safe container of human community, and then always returning to the land and to this deepest um, source of wisdom and guidance that we have literally right under our feet in this beautiful area that we get to immerse ourselves in. Thanks so much. Yeah. In a, in a minute, we'll take, if anybody has questions, um, just to say too, that um, the food and everything is included in, in the tuition and we are running an early bird special um, till March 30th. And we're also still trying to do some fundraising for some scholarship funds. So we'll see how that all pans out. But what we're um, also, what I also love about this program is that, is that the students living together are also going to be cooking the suppers and planning the meals. And so there'll be maybe one night a week if we, if we reach our, you know, 10 to 14 um, cohort that one day a week, there'll be, you're on supper duty and, and you get to create and we'll get to order food together and we'll get to go shopping together and we'll get to create the meals together. And we'll be learning some knife skills and kitchen skills, even in that very first week, um, just to get really familiar with the kitchen and get really familiar with how do we cook for this group, this particular group of humans that have assembled in this particular time and really honoring each, everybody's dietary needs and learning how to cook together for, you know, for this group. And, um, and so that's another, just a, a, a fun side benefit is, is sharing meals together. And then people will be kind of on their 
own for breakfast and lunch in terms of, you know, there'll be some, we'll be getting food every week. Um, and then just, you know, making up your lunch to bring with you to Spirit Hollow. And so there's going to be a real connection to the food as well as what's coming out of both Lisa and Scott's gardens and what's coming out of Spirit Hollow's gardens. So that we are certainly we're going to have to supplement. We don't grow any pasta or rice, but um, we certainly will have lots of vegetables and eggs. And um, and who knows what wild uh, what wild beings will be there too. And so there'll be a real connection to um, how do we create food together, which I think is one of the cornerstones of community and learning together that way will be another, um, just a beautiful part of our week together. And we do have also some guest presenters who are probably gonna come in occasionally um, to do, like we have a woman who's gonna come do a um, drum making, uh, frame drum making with us on a, on a Saturday. Um, there may be some projects smaller projects like Scott and Lisa and I were talking about like a trail between Spirit Hollow and Pompanook instead of just you know driving so there might be some expedition kind of work orienteering um, etc so while we are going to be using the interest of the students to allow this to be emergent we also will have some structure right so that the days are going to be structured Every week we'll have an overview planning and we'll know exactly what's going um, what, to what's gonna hold the, the, the week together for us. So, um, yeah. So let's see. Anybody else? Dear, do you have anything else to say? No, I do not. Okie doke. <laughs> Great. Um, Lisa and Scott, anything you want to throw in there? You're, you're muted, Lise. <laughs> I'm just really looking forward to sharing and learning from you all. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah. Great. Scott, anything? Well, I, I a quick question for you. I, I, um, the building piece, um, uh, I'm wondering about uh, maybe building a ram pump uh, at Spirit Hollow. Uh, to move water up from this from the brook yeah. cool. uh, just an idea that just popped into yeah. my head uh, I'm excited about that yeah. that'd be great yeah so you can see we all have so many things we love and are passionate about it's like what will we choose and what's the interest but we definitely have a lot in our um, tool belts so um, yeah so it's about it's it's about quarter till the hour and just wondering if there's any questions from anybody who's here or any any um thing we can clarify and feel free to just unmute yourself and pop in or or um however you'd like to do that Sage, you have any questions? Sage, Sage, who's here, has been to um, Earthcraft in the summer, and is kind of no is kind of familiar with what we're up to. Although we haven't again done it for a whole semester, we did it for nine days at a time in the summer. So, I don't know, Sage, have you any particular questions or noticings? You're muted, or your volume is down. Do you guys hear her? Is it just me? No. Hear them? No. What about now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Um, been having some tech issues. Uh, yeah. I was just gonna say that I've been to Earthcraft over the, the summer for the last two years. And uh, honestly, it's totally changed like my life and my perspective on things and since I was a, a teenager I I've been yearning for a reciprocal a reciprocal community where I can learn these skills that I'm so excited about um being involved in learning like the um building and I've been interested in like natural building for as long as I can remember and really being able to get close to the earth, I'm just 
so excited and passionate about this work. And I, I also noticed that people who do come to Earthcraft and Spirit Hollow, um, people that we keep in touch with, um, there's so much more like emotionally capable, independent, like emotionally and mentally stable. Like a lot of people who I feel like find uh, at least Earthcraft in the, the teenage years are in this culture where um, adolescence is kind of suppressed and looked down on and it's not like safe or healthy for a lot of, you know, and I'm really glad that this exists to support the young people to really give like a a grounding from which we can move forward in the world um, and try to make a better future for ourselves and the future ones. Um, I think that's all. I'm also happy to answer like any specific questions or talk more about a particular aspect mm. if you have anything. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Sage. Yeah. Yeah. Isla, do you have any questions? Not to put you on the spot. If you don't, it's fine. <laughs> or Jeremy. Um, no, I don't think so. Other than um, what is your like, like, what's your, I guess, downtime? You said Saturdays are for like downtime and rest. Um, what is like your alone space? Like, is it I guess are you can you are you just like free to roam the farm or are you like sort of contained to a spot? Um if that makes sense. Yeah. Lisa and Scott answered that about the farm a little bit. Um in the in the roundhouse, you'll be sharing a bedroom, um, probably, right? Um we have four bedrooms at, we have five bedrooms and some of them are doubles. And so in that space, you know, you'll, you'll be sharing a bathroom and sharing a bedroom. However, uh, there's a lot of open space. And as Tracy mentioned, we have a couple of yurts on the property. We have a little sauna building that is, is like a little hobbit house that is a really sweet place to go and spend time, whether there's a sauna going in there or not, or just sitting on the porch of that building. Uh, you have you will have complete free reign of, of the place. And I'm sure you'll find some nice spots that, that will be good for privacy, um, but probably not in the roundhouse, um, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a communal space. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. but you'll find other spaces for sure. Great. Great. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Anybody else have questions or anything you want to ask or share? I just want to speak to a little bit other than the, the literal physical space um, in terms of having spaciousness on your own. Um, I think it's a very well-balanced um, to kind of go back to that idea of inhales and exhales. Um, our days will be structured with group work and then lots of time, both invitations for you to go on wanders by yourself in the forest to explore, to have your own experience and downtime. And then evenings and weekends will be really open with, there will be options and we've talked about, you know, there will be some things that a guest presenter or a group of us that want to go do something, there's an option, but there's also will be lots of time for you to pursue your own interests or to just have time to relax on the grounds in the gardens in the woods um so we're really keeping keeping that idea of the stream of both individual time in community and then out on a lot of time on the land by yourself um, to really be in that conversation too go ahead rob yeah can i ask you a question sage um, you said two, two or three summers with Berkeley. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, what I want to ask you is, 
they use a lot of big words like regenerative culture and soul centric and <laughs> rites of passage. Um, do these things are these things like really in the curriculum? Do they mean something to you? Is it? It, it, it sounds really heady um, for for young people. Really intellectual. It, how does it feel? Yeah, thanks for asking. That's a good point. It's hard to explain like the experience in words and because it's so deep and unique we don't really have um something that's like normative in the culture to compare it to and I feel like in our culture those words are you know they have a they have a meaning but they don't have so much a feeling associated with it and at spirit hollow it's and and the earthcraft program it's not so much the headiness it's the feeling it's like actually experiencing the words that they mean and not just like thinking about definitions and stuff like that if that makes sense absolutely That's what I was really hoping to hear actually yeah yeah i'm glad i see, I see tracy being here. yeah it's <laughs> it's not like a philosophy experience or anything and um you know I, I applied to a a different program the first summer i came here and i actually wasn't accepted into it and it was more of a like philosophical like buddhist focused program it was still like you know being into the earth and gardening and learning skills and stuff and i'm honestly really grateful that I wasn't accepted into that program because it would have been too wordy and heady for me too too much philosophy and books and like this is like actually experiencing this stuff you don't you don't gotta know big words <laughs> yeah you, you learn it by doing it you know that's how it should be pretty cool Sage thank you you're welcome mm, thank you Sage great question Rob all right. Well, it's four minutes till the hour, the different hours of different places in the world we are in the in Turtle Island. So, um, yeah, if anybody has any more follow ups, we do have, um, you know, we're going to have another discovery call um, in April and another one in May. Um, and our applications are open and we do have um, you know, an application process where we turn that around within a week. Uh, and it requires an interview um, so that we all know it's a really good fit. And it doesn't have to be an interview with all of us, just one or two of the staff uh, to um, just make sure that you everybody feels like it's a good um, connection, good fit. So um, so anybody have any final words? Sage, you got your hand up? Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to say that if anybody has any questions for me specifically as a, a participant um feel free to like reach out to one of the staff or, or tracy and and um i'm i'm happy to answer any questions or be in touch with anybody about you know whatever thank you yeah and likewise for us if anyone has any questions about the uh the physical space here um and and what it will be like to live here. Mm. Great. I, I want to say one thing. We're uh, we're in the process of rebuilding our website. So um, I think you can get a sense of this place from the website that is up, but the information on it is is uh, old now. So, but there are pictures and ideas. Um, but we're in that process right now to to update. So. Great. All right. So anybody else have any? Yeah, go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I just want to say two things. So the, the next discovery call is April 14th, if anyone's interested in attending. And um, just in terms of the specifics of our uh, early bird discount on tuition, um, if anyone registers by um, March 30th, uh, there'll be a, a thousand dollar discount from tuition. So it'll be about was nine ninety five hundred is some something in that range, um, which is below the um, a thousand below what they're asking for full price. So just keep that in mind. Thank you.
you're muted, Trace. Blah, 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 blah. Um, how many times have you heard you're muted in the last few years? <laughs> um, just want to say that this is like a, a, a passion for all of us who are here. It's, it's as olders, I know for myself, I can say that I feel like that if we were in a healthy culture, we would have been helping our young ones all along the way and that we don't have the models that we maybe would have had in a healthy culture. We don't have the initiated elders. And what we're here to do is to try to really show up um, and really bring the gifts that we've gathered over all these years in our own lives. And we are so excited that it's like we're doing it too. Um, and so just know that we are just really, I don't know, I, I'm just babbling now, but really just passionately excited about this program and yeah yeah any last words kimber just so grateful for everyone that came and spent some time dreaming into this with us and yeah we're all i think every one of us any questions or just want to talk deeper we're all available because we love this <laughs> and um yeah we're so excited all right Say bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank nice you, everybody. Thanks for coming. Right. Thanks for coming. See you, see you on the trail, Boundless and Deer. Nice to meet you, Scott and Karina. Sage, thank you. And everybody else, thank you. Bye. Yeah, thanks, everybody, for presenting. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Isla. Amazing program. Thanks, amazing place. Um, yeah. Yeah, great.